we're beginning this, this year um, with this series that we've called Deeper. And Deeper is the theme of this entire year. I really, uh, I really want to take us on a journey. I myself want to go deeper, but I want to take us, Discovery Church, on a journey where we just go deeper into the things of God, into God's presence, into his word, deeper in our relationship with him. Who here agrees with me, man? Are you in agreement, want to go deeper with God today? Come on, somebody. Amen. Let's go deeper. If you're not already convinced, hopefully by the end of today, I'll try to convince you. Let me kind of explain, though, what deeper means. Because I talk about deeper, and maybe depending on what your context of, of faith is and your history and background, it may be something different to you and the other person. So what is the, here's what I mean by deeper, okay? Um, wherever you're at in your relationship with God, wherever you're at in your faith, take the next step. Just go to the next level. Just go a little bit deeper. That's what I want you to do during this, this series is just to take it there. Take it to the next step and go deeper. Now, now at the beginning of every year, to help us this year, it really coincides well to go deeper. We always start off with 21 days of prayer and fasting. January 6th through the 26th, just by way of announcement and really to help us go deeper this year. If that's you and you really are hungering and you're thirsty for God and you want more of him, then this is for you. Join us on this journey of prayer and fasting, and we'll be here Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. We'll have worship and prayer and stuff like that and really teach you how to have uh, time with God. So we'll be doing some soap time. If you don't know what that is, we'll, we'll teach you all that stuff. And it's going to be great, man. We're going to seek God's face for the 21 days, giving him the first of this year, um, probably more than ever, more than we're, what we're used to. We're just going to carve out the time and pause and posture ourselves to to not only talk to God, but also to receive from God the whisper of the Holy Spirit, the still, small voice, and allow, and then also to couple that with fasting. Fasting, you guys, is not a relic of the past. It isn't. It is something that, is, that, that was modeled for us, and it should be, I believe, in the life of a disciple, especially a life of a disciple who wants to go deeper and needs to be part of our regular routine, part of our rhythm to have a time of fasting. And so there's some information on our website about fasting if you want to look at that. There's all kinds of things you can fast. Some people do like social media, media type fast, TV, and use that time to maybe pray or read your Bible and, and, and do other things that are more, maybe more valuable. So we'll talk about that even today. But, but with that, can I encourage you with that type of thing and carve out time, sure, but with that, I want to encourage you this year to do some type of food fast. All right, and it doesn't need to be total all day and, and all 21 days kind of thing. It could just be, maybe it's a couple meals of, of the day. Maybe it's, it's, a, it's a Daniel type fast where you just limit yourself from certain foods and food groups. You can find more information online, but, but I, just, I just want to encourage you guys to go deeper this year, man. Let's go, let's go deeper in our relationship with God. And really, that's what it's about. This is about a relationship. It's not about, you know, going... It's not about just knowing more, man. It's about a relationship with God and deepening that experience and that relationship. One of our key verses in your handouts, you guys should have got a handout today. If not, you can catch, you can catch it right here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, you guys. One of our key verses for this series. Let your roots grow down into who? Into him, man. That's what we want. We want to go deeper, not, not just in the word, not just in prayer, not just, not, not just in things. We want to go deeper, guys, into him and let your lives be built on, on him. So what is the foundation of your life? What are you building your life on? Are you building on your career? Are you building it on success? Are you building it on fame? Or what are you building it on? And could it be that the reason why that we're, we end up at the, like the end of the year and we're looking back and we feel like, man, I, I didn't do what I wanted to do. There's some goals I didn't, I didn't really reach. Could it be that the reason is we were actually building our lives on the wrong things that can't even sustain us, that can't sustain our purpose, that can't sustain God's mission for our lives. He says, hey, let's go deep. Let's, let's, get, let's get rooted in him and be built on him. Then when you do that, when you go deep, church, then your faith will grow strong. All right? You don't have to end the year and, and feel like you, like you left some on the table and feel like you didn't do what you set out to do. And if that's what you're feeling, what that reveals is that is that you didn't go, you're not building your life on the right things, all right? Because only then, when you build your life on him, you get rooted in him, your faith, the Bible says, will grow strong. To help us teach this uh, series, I am going to be using the uh, parable of the soils, or the parable, like it's, you guys maybe hear the parable of seeds, parable of the soils. Jesus teaches this parable, and really it's, it's a great, um, it's going to give us some great illustration to 
to the different soils that Jesus goes through are different representations of our hearts and the barriers for us to go deeper. In, in this year. And so I want, we're going to use it to help us to go deeper, these parable of the soils. But if you haven't read it, you can go read it. We're going to study the Luke 8 one. We're going to study it for three weeks here, you guys. Let me kind of catch you up because we're going to read the last portion of it. The, the, the parable is about this, this farmer who's scattering seed. And some of the seed, uh, Jesus says, scattered on the footpath. And some ski, seed scattered among the weeds. And some seed was thrown and it went into some thorns. And, and, but some seed fell on good, fertile soil. And then he says in verse uh, chapter 8, verse 11 and 15, Jesus says, here then is the deeper meaning of the parable. The word of God is the seed that is sown into hearts. The seed that fell into good, fertile soil represents the lovers of God, the lovers of truth who hear it deep within their heart. See, that's where the word of God is supposed to go. It's not supposed to stay on the surface. It's not supposed to, it's supposed to go deep within our hearts. I love what he continues. He says, now when you do that, when you let the word of God go deep and not stay on the surface, but actually touch your heart, he says, they respond by, cl- I love this word, clinging to the word. To, so what are you clinging to? You know, when, you, when, I, when I hear clinging, I think about clinging, it's, it's, I see a picture of someone tripping, right? Someone needed, they need to cling to something, they need to grab, you need to cling. It's like the, on the mo- in the movies when they're falling off a cliff, you see someone falling, they're just trying to grab something close, and they grab this little root, <gasps> right? Thank you, baby root. And then, and then it pulls off and they keep falling and stuff. So here's, listen, you can only cling to what's close to you. Come on, somebody, all right? You can, you can only cling to that which, that which is close to you. So that's why when you guys are in trial and, in, and we're, we're, we're going through difficulty, and guess what? It's going to happen 2019. There's going to be some trials to come. There's going to be some tests to come. And then when they do come, you start clinging for whatever is nearest to you, and that's whatever you put close, whatever you're building your life on. So you, you'll cling. You'll try to put your, grab onto your career, grab onto money, grab onto that relationship, grab, and you try to grab on, but that little root, I'm telling you, cannot sustain you. It will not hold you. It will not hold you. It will not hold you up. He says, he, but, when, but when you actually let the word of God go deep in your heart and you put it close to you, now you can cling, and you're not clinging to things, but you can grab onto a word in the middle of that season. You can grab onto a word from God that will sustain and keep you. Can I get an amen, somebody? Because you're going to cling to whatever is closest to you. And you'll cling to the word if you allow it to go and penetrate deep in your heart, keeping it as they endure all things in faith. This is the seed, and this is what I want from you. I really want this for you this year, man, as we set out the course to go deeper and look towards 2019. That's the seed, man, that will one day bear much fruit in our lives. See, I want you to be able to get to the end of 2019 and to be able to to say without regret, man, I, I'm, I'm not where I, where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I'm a, I'm a different man. I'm a different woman. I'm grown. I'm closer to God than I've ever been before. Wow, look what he's done in my life. You can get there. You can if you let the word of God go deep in your heart. And the reason why our New Year's goal, our New Year goals and the things we set out to do are, are so short-lived is because those, deci- those decisions didn't take root in our heart. See, we made a decision, but the decision was not deep enough to change our behavior. The decision didn't penetrate deep enough to change our thinking and to change our lives. You know what the key is? Jesus is he's teaching the key here. He said, hey, the key is to be a lover of God, a lover of truth, and let the word of God go deep into your heart. See, love is the key to bearing fruit. Love is the key. Jesus said it this way in John chapter 14. He said, loving me, I I love this. He says, loving me empowers you to obey my commands. You know, God is not impressed with our religion. God is not impressed with our showing up and and the things that we do and our acts of service and our giving if we don't first give him our hearts first. Okay? The greatest gift that you can give God is your heart. I'm telling you, like, and if you try to do this whole Christianity thing, this faith thing, without that, um, let me say it this way. Religion can be and will be the biggest burden of your life 
if you don't fall in love with God. Love changes everything. It changes everything. I'm t- I promise you, Christianity, you'll, you'll get to a place where it's just like you are tired, you are, you are worn out if you don't love God, because love, he says, is the fuel. Love is the power. Love is the fire. Love gives you power to do what God wants you to do, to live the life that God's called you to live. Can I get an amen, church? Yeah. Love empowers us. It empowers us. But check out this verse. I love Psalm 90. This is a great New Year verse for us. He says, teach us to number our days. There's two different things kind of that I want to point out here with this thought. Teach us to number our days. The first is that our days are getting shorter, aren't they? Our lives are short. It's 2019 already. Somebody slapped me. (laughs) Where'd it go? What happened, right? That we are, hey, we're closer to the end. We're closer to the finish line. Life's getting shorter. That's the reality. And the psalmist is saying, you need to, you need to live with that reality that you're not going to, no, this, this life right here on earth is not forever. Teach us to know. But then it also means teach us to number our days. That means there is an order to them. To number, meaning there is a number, to put them in priority, to make the right priorities in our life. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, wisdom is the ability to apply what we know. That's what wisdom is. Now, we don't need more knowledge, right? We need more wisdom. We need a lot of what I, what I teach and a lot of what I'm teaching today and I teach often. It's stuff you guys know, right? It's stuff maybe you've either studied before or sometimes you even just intuitively know those things. We don't need more knowledge, <laughs> We need, we need to close the gap between that which we know and that which we do. That which we know is right and good and that which we actually end up doing anyway. That's wisdom. Wisdom closes the gap between what we know and what we do. To illustrate this, I, I brought some supplies with me to illustrate this point. This sand in here, all these little these little pebbles, they all represent all the little things that just kind of show up in our life, okay? You can't really escape from all this. It's just, they're just there. The emails just come, okay? You just, all right, the text just come. You got to make that phone call. You got to have that meeting. It's, 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 you got to do the shopping. These are the non-essentials. These are the non-essentials of life we spend our time on. Every one of us have them. You can't get away from them. For most of us, half of this is Facebook, okay? This is, so it's a, but these are non-essential. No, no one at the end of the day would say anything of these things. Man, I'm so glad I did that. That changed my life. Man, that made a difference. No one says that of these, of these things. Okay, they're non-essential. But these are, these are the big rocks. These are the things that are most important to us. The things we value the most, like a relationship with God. And hopefully God is someone and that you value in your, in your life. And then your relationships like your most important relationships, the ones that are most important, like a relationship with your, with your wife, relationship with your kids. And then I know for me, I need to grow, man, my personal development. I want to go deeper this year. So I know I'm going to read more, study more, seek his face more, pray. This is, I need to grow more than ever because I just need to increase my capacity. I'm, I'm teaching more. This is just, I need to grow. So I need to make some time for that. And then how about health, man? Health needs to show up in 2019. I need to exercise more. I need to eat better. Come on, somebody. We need to, that needs to show up a lot more. So this here is a picture of most of our lives. And for some of you, you're looking at this going, man, that's it, man. That's my life. That's what I'm feeling right now. I just got, it's just hard to fit it in. And it's, it's brimming over because I got all this stuff right here that just, which by the way, I'm not even going to tell you to stop doing this stuff. It actually, all I'm going to, all, all you'll see today is that the, or, let me say it this way. The order is important. Say it with me. One, two, three. The order is important. I want you to see this today because if you take the exact same amount of things that you have to do, but you actually start off with the things that are, we say are most important to us, like our relationship with God. And we put God first. Well, God first. Not, not oh, now I lay me down to see, sleep kind of relationship, but God is first in our life, right? And then we take those relationships that are important, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my kids. I learned a long time ago that my kids don't need quality time. They need quantity time and priority time. Amen, somebody? 
okay? And then I need to develop. I need to take some time to grow and develop, and I need to actually focus on my health and all that stuff. Okay, now all the other stuff that just shows up, man, all those emails and stuff, and Facebook, 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 that's you, right? Facebook, so Twitter, Twitter, Insta, Insta, YouTube, where are the kids at? YouTube, 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 right? Yep. Okay, yeah, all this stuff that shows up, all the, all the oh, I got to get the oil changed. I got to go shopping, 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 shopping. Oh, man, need more groceries. Dang it. The dishes. Oh, 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 what else? What else? All that stuff. All that stuff. Check it out. Same container, but the order is important. You'll be surprised what you can do when you get the right order. And not, only, and not only is the order important, I want you to see something. That whatever you put first, whatever you place first, goes deeper. Whatever, whatever you give the first things, it actually goes to a place that in your life, it goes deeper into your, into your life. So I want to I share with you some things because order is power. When you know it and you use it correctly, use order correctly in your life, priorities correctly. There is so much power. If you use order correctly, I'm going to give you three biblical principles about order. They're so important as we begin this, uh, this series and season of going deeper. It's so important that we, that we close the gap of what we know is important and what we actually do. So let me show you why the order is important. Number one, as we just found out, we just found out that the order determines our capacity. The order, the order of it actually determines how much I can uh, how much I can do, how much I can accomplish in a day, how much I can accomplish in the year. The order is going to determine the capacity. Jesus talked about this in Matthew chapter 6. He said, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For pagans, the people that don't know God, they run after all these things. They run after the shopping and the stuff of life and the non-essentials. They go after all that non-essential stuff. And check it out. Your heavenly father knows that you need that stuff. So God's not going, hey, hey, I just, you need to get all that stuff out of your life. Just put, get it, strip your life down. No, that's not what God wants. That's not what God's asking for you to get, strip your life down. He knows you need them, but seek, seek first. You put the order right and you'll see what happens. Check it out. Seek first his kingdom and righteousness. And look what happens. Capacity increases. And all these things will be given to you as well. All those things, those, the, Jesus says, look, I don't, you don't need to take them away. No, 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 no. All I want to be, just seek me first and all that stuff. I'll make it fit. I'll make it fit when you put first things first because order determines capacity. You get the right order, you're not going to live your life like hanging over the edges. Not enough energy, not enough time, not enough money. No, seek God first, because order determines capacity. Here's number two. Order communicates priority. Order communicates priority, meaning whatever you do first, whatever you spend your money on first, whatever you put your time to first, whatever you, you, you are doing first, check it out. It's communicating something to God, and it's also communicating to the people closest to you. It's, it's communicating something to the people around you. In other words, there are people around you that are noticing what's really important to you. So you can say one thing, but your order will really determine what really matters in your life. Now, that's a fact, okay? Because your words don't communicate your priority. Your order does. Because actions speak louder than... Yes, that's right. We know that. I, in 2016, when we built out this building... It was a busy season. It was an amazing season of harvest. It was awesome. We'd just been harvest after harvest, but it was. It was great. And I was like the foreman of the thing, man. So I was here all the time. And it was, it was fun. It, was, it took a lot of time, though, from me. After that season, I didn't notice it in the season, but after that season, my wife and I were sitting with our three kids, and we we're just talking. We we're talking about something we were going to do. I forget even what it was, a trip we were going to take. And the kids said, nah, we're not going there. What do you mean we're not going there? I just said we're going. I just said we're going there. And they said, no, you really don't do what you say you're going to do with us. Yeah. And so it hurts. It hurt me, you guys, because family is a huge value of mine. It's a huge priority to me. But my order was communicating something different to my kids. And I just wonder how many of us have some things that are very important to us 
have some things that we value a lot, but our order is communicating something different to not only God, but the people around us. You know, Jesus addressed the first church in in the book of Revelation, the the end times church. He addressed, the the first thing he addressed about the end time church in Revelation chapter two, he said, I know your deeds. You are working really hard and you're persevering. You're getting a lot in the jar. There's a lot in the jar. You're doing a lot of stuff. Good, but, but yet I hold this against you. You, you didn't put me first. You, you've forsaken your first love. So here's the principle, you guys. Um, order communicates priority. It communicates what's really most important, not, not our words. It communicates priority. Order communicates, here's number three, order impacts the rest. Order has power in it. I'm telling you, order has a power on it. I believe it's a God-given, a supernatural principle relies on, uh, it, on the first things, that whatever has first actually has power attached to it. The first has the, has the ability and the power to impact the rest. In fact, let me say it this way to help you understand. Whatever you put first, it not only goes deeper, but whatever you put first governs the structure the organization of the rest. Yes. Come on, somebody. Are you seeing this with me, you guys? Are you, are you seeing this? Okay, because whatever you put first is going to determine what the organization, the structure, the capacity of your life. It has the power to impact the rest. Now, I want to give you a verse, uh, a scripture. It's about money, but this, it's not a money message, but this, this principle in Proverbs, it doesn't just relate to money. It relates to every area of your life. Proverbs chapter 3 Verse 10, honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits. I know he didn't, God doesn't, doesn't just want fruits. He wants your first fruits. It is important to, to understand because a lot of people think that God just wants us to be generous. So just be generous. That's great. Be generous and have acts of kindness and stuff, but that's not what God, God wants. Not just fruits. He wants first fruits of all of our life, all of our crops. Then he says, when you do that, when you put first things first, when you get the order, order right, because the order is important, the order has power, then you will be, you, your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Literally, he's saying, the order will impact the rest. If you put first things first, it'll impact and give power to the rest. He wants to be first, because first is most important. Whatever goes first, goes deeper. So the question of today is, why don't we live this way? Why don't we live the way like we, we know it's important to us. We know the most important things. We know what we value. Why don't we live with those priorities? You want to know why I think we don't? It's because I don't think it's, it's gone deep enough to our hearts to actually affect our actions. I don't think we're living from that place of, of I don't think we've gone to that deeper place with God. And so before you, and some of you have already made your list and stuff like that, that's fine. But I, wanna, I just want to encourage you, before you work on your habits, let's let God work on our hearts. Can I get an amen? Because once we build our lives on him and we let the word of God go deep in our hearts, I'm telling you, only then will you bear fruit that will last. It won't be coming at the end of the year and, and, and still have stuff hanging out, left on the table, overflowing. You'll bear fruit that will last. We need to stop building our life on the sand on things that moved and shift and taking life as it comes at us, but we need to start building our life on purpose, building our life on the rock, building our life on priority. Let me say it this way. Some some of you guys have skyscraper ambitions, skyscraper goals, and tool shed foundations. (laughs) Come on. Come on, somebody. It's great. That's that's great that you have those, those, uh, those, you know, lofty goals and stuff, but Hey, you need to work on the foundation in order to reach Galatians chapter four, verse eight and nine says this. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves. Check this out to those things who by nature, they were not gods. Those things, look, those things, you didn't know it, but those things you put first, they actually had power. You actually gave power to whatever you put first or whatever it is that you were prioritizing, whatever it is, you actually, those things that are not gods in your life, 
Those things that, that you know are not important, you know are not valued, but you live your life upside down instead of right side up according to God's kingdom and seeking his kingdom and righteousness first. We are serving things that are not God's. You didn't know it, but those things you put first, they actually went deep. They went deep. And your heart took root to it. And so when it, that's why you cling to it and you run back to it, but it ain't holding you up. It's not sustaining you. It's not giving you the joy, the purpose, the value, the mission that God is. It's not God. It's not God, he says. He continues, but now, hey, now that you know God, you know God, or rather you're known by him, how is it that you're turning back to those weak and miserable principles? How is it that we know what's most important and most valuable, but we get towards the months and towards into the year and at the end of the year that we've already gone back to the lesser things, to, the, to those things that are non essential. We, when we know that our family is important, when we know our calling is important, when we know God should be first in our life, yet we turn back to those weak and miserable principles. Do you wish to be enslaved? Do you wish to have your, the root of your heart in the wrong soil? Enslaved, he says, all over again. So I want to help you, today I want to help you know God. And that's what I'm talking about. When we talk about going deeper, I'm not talking about just getting more information. I'm talking about knowing God more, letting the loving God and letting the word of God take root, going deep into our hearts so that we'll produce fruit that will last. Because you don't, listen, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You will, you will fall to the level of your priority. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching. You guys got to help me out here. Listen, you don't, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You set high goals, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. This is what I'm going to do. Great, but you don't rise to that. You actually fall to the level of your order, of your priority, the priorities you're setting in your life. So let me help you with your priority. Let me help you get some things back in order as we begin this year and as we go deeper, as we set a course, man, that is going to change. I believe transformational can change our life if we get the order right because the order is important the order communicates priority the order impacts the rest and if you get the order right i'm telling you it'll change your life so let me give you some things really really real quick to apply i want to you to apply the word of god in your life okay number one we got to start here give god the first of everything Come on, if the order is important, if whatever oh, I put first and place first goes deepest and I actually attach myself and enslave myself, and if that's my root system and the thing that I cling to, hey, let's put God first, church. Hey, you want a different result? You got to try a different route. Give God the first of everything this year. And I would even challenge you, some of you guys just, let me just even bring it, give me 21 days. Just give me 21 days of you living this way, of you changing the order, of you putting God first in every area of your life, and just, just see if it doesn't all fit, and you don't have the joy and peace and love and purpose of God. Just see if your life is not different when you put God first in every area of your life. I'm so, so 21 days, let's put them first, first in the year. Let's seek them, man. 21 days of prayer and fasting for the first 21 days. Let's do it. Let's, let's give them the first of our day. Let's, even if it's five minutes to pray and set aside some time and read the scriptures, let's get them first. Let's put them first in our relationships and make sure he is our priority relationship. Let's put them first in our finances. Uh-oh, somebody. Come on, let's put them first in every area of our life. I believe a tithe, okay, a tithe is a tenth, but you know what I believe, and the scripture teaches this too, I believe, is that God is not as concerned with what you give. He's concerned in the order that you give. He wants to be first. He wants first fruits, you guys. Well, let's give God first in everything. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. I love the Living Bible translation. It says, in everything you do, put God first. And when you do that, when you get the order right, and he will direct you. How many of you want to be directed by God in 2019? Anyone want God direct your steps? Amen. Anyone, anyone would like to set goals and actually reach them? Amen. <laughs> okay. And crown your efforts with what? With success, the order is important. Just try it. Just try it, man. This year, let's go. 21 days, let's go deeper. Put God first in everything. And then here, let me help you now in this relationship, this most priority relationship. Number two, write this down. We need to see God as a father. 
We need to see God. Like, how do we, how do you, so how do you see God? Because however you perceive God determines what you will receive from God. I'm preaching so much better. Come on. Amen, Pastor Jason. That's a good word right there. Well, however you see God determines how you relate to God. It determines what you receive from God. So, so how do you see God? What is, what is it? Who is the God? Do you see him as a good father? Or is he this, this you know, judge with a gavel, you know, mad at you, kind of up in the sky? Who, how do you see God? Jesus revolutionized how people saw God in his time. They had a different concept of who God was. This idea of God as Father was very revolutionary to the early Israelites when Jesus was walking the earth. In Matthew chapter 7, he kind of explained to them, and he said, which of you, if his son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Who would do that? You wouldn't do that. Or if he asked for a fish, will give him a snake? That's crazy. No one would do that. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who who asked him? Jesus was revolutionizing people's mindsets that God is not this lightning bolt. God is not this fire. He's not this smoke. He's not this box. He's not this thing. He's a father. He's a father. He's a good father. Do you see him as a father? And listen, when, I believe this, this, it's tough for a lot of us, because a lot of us didn't have good dads. We didn't have good earthly representatives of a father, myself included. I don't know if you're in that boat too. If you had a great dad, man, that's awesome. Statistically, a lot of us in this room didn't. My dad didn't stay. He wasn't around, all right? And you know what? I, I believe that, that that earthly relationship actually affects and infects the way you see your heavenly father. In fact, I believe that the reason why the enemy did that, the, way, the reason why the enemy did that to your dad and the reason why he did that to you, you between your dad wasn't to ruin your family. It was to ruin this. It was, it was to affect and infect your relationship with your heavenly father because he knows that there is power, so much power, when you, when you, when you see your God as father and you see yourself as daughter and you see yourself as son, now receiving from him is easy. Now receiving his grace and his love and his forgiveness and his unconditional love is so easy when I see him as a father. That's easy. But if I see him as some arbitrary judge or God, some, some distant God, then now it's hard for me to receive his gifts, receive his, how you perceive him determines what you receive from him. You see God, see God. Start with your eyes. You got to see God the right way. Give him first of everything. Then here's the third one. How do we approach God? How do we come to him now? Here's the way we need to approach God now through relationship, not rules. Approach God through relationship, not rules. Now, rules, um, rules are important. They're a part of life, right? Okay, everywhere is rules. I got house rules. I got rules for my kids, okay? If you don't have house rules for your kids, you need to get some rules, okay? I'll let you borrow mine until you get your own rules. Get some rules in your life, okay? There's rules that guide us on the road and everything. So there's nothing wrong necessarily with rules, but, but listen, how you approach God, whether it's on the basis of rules or the basis of relationships, listen, determines how deep that relationship will go, okay? So if I were to ask you a question, like, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean for you to be a Christian? Some people answer that question, and they'll give me a list of what they do and don't do. Oh, man, I go to church, and I do this, and I do that. And they go, oh, I don't do this, and I don't do that. And, I'm, I'm, uh. and, and, and you know what? Someone who, who approaches God on the basis of relationship will answer that question so di much differently. What does it mean to be a Christian? It means I am known and intimately know my God, that I love him, he loves me, and that relationship impacts and empowers everything I do. It just changes things when you approach God on the basis of relationship, not rules. Come on, give him some praise, church. John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40, Jesus says, you diligently study those scriptures because you think that by them those scriptures itself, you'll possess eternal life. These are actually the scriptures that testify about me. Yet you, you, you refuse to come to me. Jesus is saying here, what he's saying is, hey, those scriptures, those, those things that you do, they weren't, those weren't the end result. I'm telling you, this is so important. How do, you, how do you approach your prayer life? How do you approach your Bible reading? How do you approach the 21 days of prayer and fasting? How do you approach going to church? Do you approach it because you have to, or do you approach it because you want to be close to your Father? 
Now change, it'll just, it will change. Jesus says, hey, all that stuff, it wasn't about that stuff. It was actually so you can go deep into a relationship with me so that we could be close. We approach God on the basis of relationship, not rules. I'm telling you, if we can, th- this stuff will revolutionize your walk with God. If you, can, if you can see God, if you can first give God first of everything, see him as a father, approach him on the basis of relationship, it's, this will allow you now to go to the place, to go deeper. Come on, to go on a journey of going deeper with God than you've ever been before. And then lastly, number four, give God my whole heart. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. It doesn't work. Christianity doesn't work unless you go all in. It won't. I'm telling you, you, you give God 90%, 90% of your life, and, and you may last a little while, but after a while, you're going to go, whew, I'm tired. This is getting hard. This is getting heavy. This sucks. I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, you can get to that place because it just doesn't work unless you go all in and give God your whole heart, unless you give him all, everything. There's a scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29. God says, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. The antithesis, antithesis of that is, if you don't go all in, you won't find me. You can't. But if you do, if you give me your whole heart, if you go all in this year, let's see what God will do when you put all the chips on the table. When you go all in, he says, when you do that, I will be found in your life. I'll show up in your life. I'll be found by you. Church, let's go deeper. Wherever you're at, let's take the next step in our relationship with God. Here, let me summarize the message in this, this one last feeling. A deeper relationship changes everything. A deeper relationship with God, when you put them first, when you, when you put the first things first and you allow it to go deep, I'm telling you, it empowers, influences, and impacts the rest of your life. And when you deepen that relationship, it'll change everything you do. It'll change the trajectory of your life this year. Amen, church? Let's pray. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we just thank you so much for your love and for your grace, for getting us here, getting us this far. As we look back into 2018, God, we, we see your hand, we see your goodness, but we also see where we missed it, where we messed up. And your love abounds there. Your grace does. Thank you, God, for loving us in spite of of us. God, we help us because we don't, we don't want to live in that gap of knowing what is most important in our life, knowing what should be priority, but living in a different way, not putting our family where they need to be, not putting you, God, where you need to be in our life. God, help us to reorder in Jesus' name. God, right now, we're reordering our life. Come on, church, we're reordering. God, we're going to put first things first because the order is important and we declare right now we give you everything is yours the first in our in our time god it's yours the first in our year god it's all yours the first in our relationships we put you first in our relationships they're yours god we put you first in our finances first in every area of our life god in everything you are first thank you god if you're here today with every head by on eye close If that's not something that you feel like you've ever done, to put God first, to really surrender the control of your life to Jesus, I want to help you do that today. I'm not going to call you up to the front or single you out, but maybe you're here today and you feel like, you know what, I've never done that. I've never put them first, made them the priority of my life. Romans chapter 10 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, meaning the controller, owner of your life, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. He'll give you a fresh start and a clean slate to start 2019 today. And some of you need to do that for the first time. Some of you need to do it again because the order has just gotten, it's gotten out of order for a while now. And it's time to get, it's time to put it back and put first things first. And we need to start here that, that God, I put you first. This is where we have to start in order to bear fruit that will last, in order to go deeper, in order to in order to make an impact this year, that to to prioritize our life in a way that impacts and empowers the rest. Come on, let's do it. With every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you, and you're ready to go all in with God and get a fresh start today, 
whether it's the first time or you need to do it again, I want to pray for you. I'm not going to call you up to the front, but do me a favor. Raise up your hand and say, come on, I'm going all in. Yes. Leave it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going all in. I'm leaving nothing back. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Join us. Yeah, yeah. All over this place. Keep them up. Yes, all over. I see hands everywhere. Hands are everywhere. Come on. Yes, yes. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So good. Yep, yep. You're not too late. Ain't too late. Yeah, here. Yep. Amen. This is so beautiful. Go ahead and put your hands down. Will you pray? Even whisper in your seat right there. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins, for not living my life by what's important. So today, I'm reordering and I'm putting you first. I surrender the control of my life to you, Jesus. I surrender. I declare that you're my Lord and my Savior. Come live inside of me. Change me. Fill me with your love and let that love empower me. Let it be the fuel that motivates me to live for you. Thank you, God, for saving me. God, I pray for every person as we begin this deeper series in season that we would put things in the right order and close the gap between what we know And what we do, by the power of your spirit, in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen. Come on, give God some praise, church, if you receive it today.